Good morning students. Welcome to the Department of Soil Science. Today we are going to start a new practical and the title of the practical is Collection and Preparation of Soil Samples for Laboratory Analysis. Soil is a very heterogeneous system. Within a small cultivated area, there may be considerable variation in the soil properties. Thus, to evaluate any soil property, the first important step is the collection of a soil sample, which can represent the entire field or the area. To fulfill this objective, systematic procedure is followed for collection of soil sample. The adoption of appropriate procedure also depends on the purpose of the study. In general, there are three purposes of soil sample collection. First one, pedological study like soil classification, survey, mapping, land evaluation. Second, evaluation of soil fertility status. And third, for reclamation of problematic soils. The procedures vary with the purposes. For pedological study, sampling is done from a soil profile, but for evaluation of soil fertility status, sampling is done up to a depth of plough layer that is 0 to 15 centimeter. For collection of soil samples, first we need soil sampling tube or augers. Various types of augers are available and used in different conditions. Screw auger, suitable for gravelly or stony soils. Barrel auger, suitable for loose or sandy soils and in compact soils. Dutch auger, suitable for wet or moist soils of moderately fine or fine texture. If augers are not available, a garden spade or kurpi can also be used effectively. Besides this, a bucket, clean polythene sheet, wooden mortar, pestle, sieve, plastic bags, tag, markers are also required for the purpose. Under this practical, we will discuss the sample collection procedure for evaluation of soil fertility status. If the field or the area is large one, it should be divided into small units of about 2 hectares. A composite sample can be collected from each unit. If the area is level one or has uniform texture, the size of the sampling unit may be 4 hectares. First, remove the grasses from the surface and insert the auger by rotating to a plow depth. Remove the auger and put the soil adhered to the auger into the bucket. If kurpi is used, then first make a V shaped hole and Insert the kurpi. At least 20 to 25 numbers of such samples should be taken in a zigzag way to cover the entire field. Mix the soils thoroughly and then spread it. Make four quarters and discard two opposite quarters. Repeat the procedure until about one and a half kg soil is left. Transfer the collected soils from the plastic bag and spread in a clean paper or plastic sheet for drying. The soils are allowed to dry under set condition. 
After drying, the soils are grinded. Pass the crushed soil through 2 mm sieve. Put the soils in a clean plastic bag or plastic container and tagged properly. Determination of soil moisture content. The simplest and most widely used method for measuring soil moisture is gravimetric method. Under this method, a mass of soil is taken from the desired depth and then measuring its moist weight. The sample is then dried to a constant weight in hot air oven and measured its dry weight after cooling. The difference in weight of moist and dry soil is the weight of moisture present in the soils and expressed as percentage of dry soil mass. For this purpose, we need sampling auger or kurpi, moisture cans, electronic balance, hot air oven, and desiccator. First, weigh accurately three clean dry moisture cans along with their lids. Collect 50 to 100 gram soil samples from the field with the help of agar or kurpi and put immediately to the cans and close the lid tightly. Bring the cans to the laboratory, record the weights. Soil samples are allowed to dry for 24 hours at 105 degrees centigrade. Repeat the weighing process until a constant weight of can plus soil is obtained. Now the calculation part for the soil moisture content. First, the weight of empty can W1, say it is 15 gram. Weight of moist soil with can W2, that is suppose 45 gram. Weight of dry soil with can W3, that is 38 gram. Weight of water present now, the W2 minus W3, that is 45 minus 38, is equal 7 gram. Weight of oven dry soil, W3 minus W1, that is 38 minus 15, is equal 23 gram. Now the soil moisture content by weight in percentage, weight of water divided by weight of oven dry soil into 100, that is 7 by 23 into 100, the 30.43 percent. If we calculate soil moisture content by volume, the soil moisture content by weight basis into bulk density. Say the bulk density of the soil is 1.24 gram per cc. That will be equal to 30.43 percent into 1.24 is equal to 37.73 percent. Determination of bulk density of soil. Bug density of soil is defined as the oven dry mass of soil per unit of its bug volume. The bug volume comprises volume of soil solids and of pore spaces. It is one of the most important physical properties which indicates compactness of soil. The estimation of bug density involves determination of the mass of soil after drying to a constant weight at 105 degrees centigrade and the volume of soil by usual method. Several methods can be used to determine the bug density of soils, out of which core method is widely used. It is easy to adopt and more accurate than other conventional methods. For that, we need a core sampler, moisture can, hot air oven, and an electronic balance. First, we have to measure the radius and length of the core sampler and calculate its inner volume. Then insert it to the surface soil up to the desired depth 
after that remove the core put the soil into a clean previously weighted moisture can Put the can with moist soils in the hot air oven. Remove the lid and allow to dry for 24 hours at 105 degrees centigrade. Switch off the oven. Cool the samples for some time. Transfer the samples to the desiccator for further cooling. Repeat the weighing process until a constant weight of sample is obtained. Now the calculation part for the bulk density. First, lay the radius of the core sampler that can be designated as R, suppose it is 3 cm. Length of the core sampler we are using that is L, suppose it is 8 cm. Volume of the core sampler or volume of the soil that is pi r square into length of the core sample that is l that is say 226.08 cubic centimeter now let weight of the empty can is equal to w1 that is suppose 45 gram weight of the can plus oven dry soil is equal to w2 which is equal to suppose 375 gram now the mass of the oven dry soil is equal to w2 minus w1 that is 375 minus 45 gram is equal to 330 gram now the bulk density of the soil that is mass of the oven dry soil divided by the volume of the soil that is w2 minus w1 divided by pi r square l cubic centimeter that is 330 divided by 226.08 that is equal to 1.46 gram per cubic centimeter. Determination of particle density of soil. Particle density is the mass of a soil per unit volume of its soil solids. The particle density of mineral soil generally varies from 2.60 to 2.75 gram per centimeter cube with an average value of 2.65 gram per centimeter cube. To determine the particle density, first we have to determine the mass of soil and the volume of solids. We can take the weight of soil easily, but determination of volume of solid is difficult and thus measured indirectly. A given amount of dry soil when immersed in a definite volume of water that results in the displacement of equal volume of water. The volume of soil particles is determined by measuring this displaced volume of water in a pycnometer. Thus, the method is also known as pycnometer method. Volumetric flask can also be used if pycnometer is not available. Besides a pycnometer, we need a pipette, electronic balance, and a hot plate. Boil 250 ml of distilled water and allow it to cool. Take the weight of a dry and clean pycnometer. Fill the pycnometer up to half with the soil and take the weight. Then again fill the pycnometer containing the soil by pouring pre-boiled cool distilled water. Using a pipette, wash the soil particles sticking to the inner side of the neck. Put the stopper, wipe off any water on the surface, record the weight of pycnometer with soil and water in it. Next. Remove the soil and water from the pycnometer and wash it properly. Then fill the pycnometer with previously boiled cooled distilled water. Insert the lid and thoroughly dry the outside of the pycnometer. 
and take the weight. The calculation part for particle density. First, the weight of empty picnometer. Suppose this W1, let it is 10 gram. Weight of picnometer plus water, W2, which is equal to say 60 gram. Weight of picnometer plus dry soil, that is W3, say it is 95 gram. Weight of picnometer plus soil plus water, W4, is equal to say 110 gram. Weight of dry soil then W3 minus W1 that is W5 is equal to 95 minus 10 that is 85 gram. Weight of water in the picometer that is W2 minus W1 say it is W6 that is 60 minus 10 is equal to 50 gram. Now the volume of the picometer. The volume of water in the picometer is equal to weight of the water divided by density of water. So who is where we can take one gram per cc is the density of water. That is W6 divided by one, that is 50 divided by one is to 50 cubic centimeter. Weight of water in the picnometer after putting the soil, W4 minus W3, say W7, it is 110 minus 95 is equal 15 gram. Volume occupied by water in the picnometer, that is W7 divided by density of the water, that is W7, that is 15 divided by 1, the 15 cubic centimeter. The volume of dry soil in the picnometer, W6 minus W7, say W8, this 50 minus 15 is equal to 35 cubic centimeter. Then the particle density of the soil is equal to weight of the dry soil divided by volume of soil solids. That is W5 divided by W8 gram per cubic centimeter is equal to 85 divided by 35 gram per cubic centimeter which is equal to 2.42 gram per cubic centimeter. Determination of soil texture by fill method. Soil texture refers to the relative proportion of the sand, silt and clay particles in a mass of soil. It is the most important physical property of soil that influences many soil properties including the productivity. Soil texture can be determined in the field by filling of the soil within fingers. The method is based on the differential filling of moist soil and that's why it is known as fill method. The individual soil particles fill differently. The sand particles feel gritty when the soil is rubbed in between fingers. The silt particles feel smooth and powdery, while the clay particles feel smooth, sticky and plastic when the soil is moist. Based on these characteristics and some other features, soil texture can be determined. This method is, however, arbitrary and requires skill and experience for arriving at a definite degree of accuracy of the determination. Take about 2 gram of soil in your hand and moist the soil with few drops of water Feel the grittiness or smoothness of the soil by rubbing it in between fingers. If it is very gritty, sand or loamy sand. Moderately gritty, sandy loam. Neither very gritty nor smooth loam. Smooth or sticky buttery fill, silt loam. Slightly gritty fill, clay loam, very smooth, silty clay loam or clay. Press the moist soil in between your thumb and forefinger and observe whether it stains the fingers. Does not stain finger, sandy soil. Stains finger slightly, loamy sand. Definitely stains finger, sandy loam, loam, silt loam, clay loam, silty clay loam, 
clay. Try to form ball. Can the soil form a ball? Does not form ball. Sand. Forms ball but breaks very easily. Loamy sand. Forms ball but breaks easily. Sandy loam. Forms firm ball. Loam or silt loam. Moderately hard ball when dry, silty clay loam or clay loam. Forms hard ball cannot be crushed by fingers when dry, clay. Try to form ribbon, does not form ribbon, sand, loamy sand, sandy loam and loam. Slight ribbon forms with flaky surface, silt loam. On squeezing, ribbon forms with some flex, silty clay loam. On squeezing, forms long ribbon, clay. Dear viewers, hope you have enjoyed our video on collection and preparation of soil samples for laboratory analysis and the soil physical properties. If you have any query, then you can contact in details given below. Namaskar.